So in this screencast, we're going to look at the general purpose input output on embed using the, uh, the application board. So we're going to be looking how to use these buttons. So we've got four push buttons here, A, B, C, D. We've also got the four onboard LEDs. So we've got LED 1 up to LED 4. And then this uh, RGB LED as well on develop board we can use. So we'll look at how to write the code using the embed API uh, to interact with these uh, devices. Just to point with the buttons, you can see there's these jumpers here. So these jumpers need to be in position when you're using the switches. So that's a, the pins, the GPI O pins that the, the two of the switches are connected to are also, um, have also got a UART functionality. So these test points here, so this is test point one, test point two, you can use to observe uh, serial, serial data being sent and received by the embed. So to do that, you need to remove the jumpers but when you want to use the, the embed pins as GPIO pins, you need to have these jumpers in place. So jumper 9 and jumper 10 need to be in place. So on the embed uh, on compiler, I'm going to create a new program. So new, new program. So you need to select, make sure that the embed LPC 176J uh, platform is selected. I'm just going to, I'll, I'll, I'll use this template so I don't need to import the embed library. I call it a GPIO, a GPIO example. Oops. So now we've got our project here. We've got a main source file, so main.cpp, and then the embed libraries. So in main.cpp, we included embed.h, so this gives us access to all the uh, embed libraries. And we've, we've got, well, in the, in the example template, we've already got a digital eight. So that's used for one of the onboard LEDs. Then we've got um, our main function of the while loop. So I'm just gonna I'll delete the contents of the main function. So the first thing I want to do is set up the four buttons. So we've got A, B, C, D. So in the application board user guide, I'm going to check out the button. So the four buttons are connected to these embed pins, so pin 26 to pin 29. So we need to create digital in objects. So we'll delete this and replace it by. So digital in, call it button A. So button A is on pin 29. I can just copy and paste this then four times. So A, B, C, D. So 28, 27, 26, 28. So here that's it. I've got I've got my I've got my four buttons. And then for the time being, I'll create the digital eight objects again. So digital eight. So I call it LED1. So the four onboard LEDs are known as LED1, 2, 3, and 4 in uppercase. So I'm just going to create, remember this is our class, so digital eight class. I've created an object called LED 1, 2, 3 and 4 and I've connected those to. So at this point here I've got my four buttons and I've got my four outputs so I can start writing some code now. So just, just to check that everything um, seems to be working fine. In the main function I'll just do LED, LED 1 equals 1 so that turn it on. Just to demonstrate another way of doing it you for LED2, I'll use the right method. So these two are completely equivalent. So that'll turn LED2 on. LED3, I'll just do it the shock. That, you know, that way is less typing. So I'll turn them all on there, I'll compile. Now in downloads, I'll just drag that onto the embed. And I can reset the embed. So all four LEDs are coming. So we know, um, so we know our embeds working and things. So now we want to start interacting with these buttons. So I'll just do something simple. I'll just say right, if you press button A, uh, LED one come on. If you press button B, LED two will come on. C, LED three will come on. And D, LED four will come on. So I need to go back. To the user guide to look at the 
the buttons. So you can see the buttons have got a pull down resistor connected on the actual PCB. So you can actually see it. Um, so you can see these four LEDs. So next to each one of the buttons, there's a small LED, so a small resistor. So that's a pull down resistor. So that means a pin, the GPIO input pin we've created with digital in will be zero by default. Then when we press the button, we'll connect it to 3.3 volts and the pin will read a one. So because we've got a pull down um, resistor on the PCB, it means we can actually turn off, because by default, the digital in object has a pull down resistor um, enabled by default. So we can actually turn off the internal ones because we've got an external one on this PCB. So the first thing we can do is button uh, dot mode and then do, have to do pull non. So this this command turns off the pull down internal pull pull down resistors for button A, B, C. Now I'm going to press this one button here just to format the code. So I'm going to put them in a function because you know I don't really you know you don't really want to, your main function to start getting polluted. So here I'll just tidy the file up. So these are embed API objects. And here are my uh, function prototypes. So I'm going to create a function called um, init buttons. So this is not, you know, we don't have to send anything so the argument's empty. We're not going to return anything so it's a void function. So I'll copy, copy and paste the prototype. And I've got that function here. So it's going to copy these lines of code. And I'll stick them in the functions and just keep formatting it. So here in main, rather than having those four lines polluting it, I can just do init buttons. So now when, when main, when the code starts executing, um, you know, that, that function will get called. We'll jump to here, we'll turn off all internal pull-ups. So turn off internal pull-ups as board as external external ones. So now I need to read the state of those buttons. So I want to do this repeatedly, so not just to read them once, I want to keep reading them for as long as the device has got power. So that means I know I need to use a while one loop. So I need to use an infinite loop. So I want to keep the code running forever. So I'm gonna, um, I know I need to put all the code inside this while one loop. So inside of here, now we need to check the status of the buttons. So I'm gonna do if, so I need to check button one. So we can see here, if, sorry, if button A has been pressed, that pin will read a 3.3, so that's the equivalent of a, a logic one. So if button A dot read, so you can use this this syntax. You can use a read method. So the digital in class has got a read method. So button A dot read. Remember, double equals that is, you know, that's very big, very common error. So if you do that, that does it. That's not going to work. You need to use the equivalent operator. So check if that is equal to one. But in fact. If it's zero, you don't have to use that at all. You can that's perfectly fine as well. So if we do but, uh, button a dot read and it returns zero, if zero is false, if you do um, if it returns a one, that's true. So this whatever is in this these curly braces will get executed. So that is fine. You know that's this is going to work. So that's um, so put here. So check. If button A pressed, so button A is pressed. I want to do LED one, and again, I'll I'll use a right method. I could do LED one equals one. But I'll use a right method. So if it's been pressed, I want to turn the LED on. Oh, so it's not been pressed. I want to turn the LED off. So I'll write zero to that. So turn on if pressed. 
turn off if not pressed. So at this point, you know, before uh, before I bother writing the rest of the code, I'll just check to see if this works. So again, compile. So I can put that on the embed. The LEDs are still on from because the last code's still working, so I press reset and install this new version of the software and all the LEDs off. So now I press button A. So as long as I'm holding down the button A, so now we're inside that while loop just repeatedly checking where the button A is pressed. So this is you know button A has probably been pressed a hundred thousand been checked a hundred thousand times now. You know, the process is running at about hundred megahertz. And it's going to be repeatedly checking this button. So all during this period I'm holding the button down. You know, the, the, the pin's connected to one. That is statement's true, so the LED will come on. As soon as I let go, it'll go off. And you can see. So B, C and D don't do anything yet, because we've not put that code in, but you know, so it seems that the code in principle works. By pressing A, I can control LED one. So now we know that code works, essentially you can just copy and paste this code. In fact, I'm not going to copy and paste, I'm going to make a function because I just say if I copy and paste this four times, this while one loop is going to start getting quite polluted as well. It starts to get hard to debug. So I'm going to create another function. You know, so a function, remember, is some kind of standalone block of code. So I'm going to create a function called uh, check button A. Again, I'm not going to return anything, and I'm not going to send anything to it. So it's so a void and there's no arguments. I'm just going to, all that code, I'm just going to dump in here. So now I can call that. So now we've got a nice, uh, you know, the main code's nice and clear. It's obvious what's going on, so we're going to start the code, initialize the buttons, and then inside a while one loop, we'll check button there. So now we can um, copy and paste that four times, and it's just a case of changing the values inside here. So all the A's I need to turn to B's, and then LED2 I'll change to. LED one zero chase LED two. That's that function done. So check button C. LED one LED three. And for check button D, I'll do button D. Now it's LED four. So those functions are all very similar. And then in the main loop, I can just copy and paste that function call. Oops. So now that's you know the the code is nice, nice and simple. This is what you want. So this is what you want. The simpler your main function in, you know, the simpler the while one loop, you tend to always have this infinite loop here. So the more simple that is, the easier it is to debug and maintain the code. If you start if this if the while loop starts to get 10, 20, 30, 40 lines long, it becomes very hard to follow logic. But if you break down your program into these uh, subroutines or subfunctions, you know, it makes it much easier. So I'm pretty sure this is going to work. I'll just double check. So we'll compile. So that's not going to, that's going to come up with an error, I think. Yep, I forgot to do one thing. So here, the compiler said, check button B is undefined. So line 25. So here it says it doesn't know what this means, and it's because I forgot to do the prototype, the function prototype. So at that point, because because these functions are underneath main, when the compiler you know it compiles it line by line, but when it gets to here, it doesn't know what check button B means. It's not that function's not been defined yet. You know the function only appears below it. So that's why we use function prototypes. So I can just co again copy and burst A B C D. Now it compiles. That was a success that time. So again, just 
put onto the embed. And I'll reset. I'll install it on the Mac controller memory. So now, you know, now we're just going around this while loop, checking each of those buttons in turn, but obviously we're not pressing any at this moment, so nothing's happening. So I'll press A, LD1 comes on. I'll press B, LD2 comes on. C, this one, and D. So that, um, you know, that seems to be working fine. So now I'll go back and give a demonstration of how to use the bus out. So here we've had to control each LED individually. So we've had to control them all at the same time using a bus out structure. So I'll commentate this code. So we put forward slash asterisk that starts a comment block. And that, you know, do it in reverse or it ends a comment block. So I'll just commentate that code. And now I'm going to replace this by a bus out. So I'm going to call this LEDs. And then we have to give the argument to this function. So LED4, LED3, LED2, LED1. So you, you might be thinking, why have I done 4, 3, 2, 1? Well, it's because this is actually the least in, the first argument is the least significant bit, and the last one is the most significant bit. So look at the LEDs. So this is LED1 here. So I'm considering, I'm kind of looking at it from this way, and saying, well, when we write a binary number, the least significant bit is on the right. So I want the least significant bit to be LED4, Three, two, one. Yeah, working up to the most significant bit. So that's the reason I did it that way. So now I'll replace the LED one, two, and one, two, three, and four by bus eight LED. So now I just need to go through the code and replace that. So we went when for button A we wanted LED one to come on. So I wanted to want bit four. So I'll now I need to change this to LED. So bit four, so we know one zero 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 is one two four eight in binary. Sorry, eight in decimal. So I can so I'll do eight. So that's going to write eight. So in binary, eight is one zero zero zero. So the most significant bit will come on. So button B again. So now we've not got LED twenty. We've got LEDs. So right, so button B is LED three, so that's one, two, four. Again, so for C, that will be two. So obviously, two in binary is zero zero one zero. And finally, for button D, we can keep that the same actually. That's just. We want the least, so button D is controlling the least significant bit, so it's just one. So I'll give that a go. Install this. Press reset. That's oh, promising. So, yeah. So, yeah, so we've got the same functionality. So by changing digital into bus out, it's not. Um, it's not changed the functionality, it still works the same. But now we're just using, using the bus out uh, class rather than having to control four, individu four individual LEDs. We've got this. So we'll look now how to use, I'll use the onboard LEDs. So in the In the notes, we can see the RGB LED. So that's three LEDs in kind of one inside one device. They're on 24, 23, and 22. You can create the three different digital light objects, and we can do it this way as well. The bus out. So I'll, I'll do it this way. So 24. I'll just copy this and I'll paste it into here. That's working. I'll, I'll keep the other one in as well. So we just look what this is. So 24, so the most significant bit is 24. So that's the red. So I'll just make a note of that so I don't forget. So we've got uh, G, B. 
and remembering. So the red corresponds to the least significant bit of the value, and the uh, blue corresponds to the most significant bit. So, well, actually, we need to look here as well. This so the LEDs are actually connected in like negative logic. So this active low configuration, where when the pin's high, the LED will be off, and it's when the pin is low, the LED will come on. So I'm going to create another. So that gives want to configure the LEDs because at the moment, if I create that, the LEDs will just come on when we turn the board on. Because by default, an output pin is low. So if you don't set an output pin, it's just going to get a low value by default. So that's very bright. So that's all. The RGBs are all on because um, it's active low. So they're all zero, so all the LEDs are on. So I'm going to make a function in it LEDs. I'll put RGB LEDs. Let me know. I can distinguish between the onboard LEDs and these ones. And let's copy that prototype. In fact, I'm going to move that because it's good. It is good practice. So here, the order of your function prototypes, if you kind of keep the functions in that order, it just makes it easier to navigate through your uh, source code. So I want to turn them all to a one. So I'll demonstrate here. I actually can use binary numbers. So this is quite a new feature. The the new compiler, what's on the embed website, allows us to use binary numbers. And the 0B111. One, one, one. So that means each of those bits on this bus will be a 1. And that'll turn the LEDs off. Again, so once I check that this is working. So, so it's always a good idea when you're writing code to kind of you know test it regularly. In, you know, don't write 100 lines and then compile it because you might find you've got 50 different errors. You know, when you come to deep, you know, run it and test it, there'll be tons of bugs to find. But here, so you notice I don't really have many compilation errors. And that's just because we've been writing little chunks at a time. You know, the simple chunks. Test that chunk, right, that works. And then work on the next. So hopefully I've turned this off, the LED should go off. So we'll say button A will turn on um, the red LED. So the red LED is the least significant bit. So if we press the button, I'll make it one. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way around. So zero, one, one. So when the bit is zero, that LED will come on. When it's a one, it'll go off. In fact, I can just copy and paste this line then. So it's not been pressed. I'll turn them all off. So it's just a case of putting this code in for each of the ones. So that'll be one zero one. So the middle so green is the middle bit. That'll turn so green on. So this is uh, GB off. So it's useful just to put comments in just to, help, just to help us remember what we've done. So I'll copy that. Um, so blue will be 110. I'll turn them all off and then. For D, we'll do red, green, we'll do yellow. I have to think about this now. So what is it, how do you get yellow? I think, is it green and blue? I think it's green and blue. Not very good at primary colours. So we'll try yellow, pretty sure it is. I'll turn them off. Well again, we've just got to test. So I'll plug that onto the embed. So reset it. 
So I'll press here, so this should be red. Oh no, green. Is that blue? I've got these the wrong way around, haven't I? So B, green. C is red. At least that is yellow. Right, okay, so A and C. What's going on there? So button A is turning blue on. And I wanted it to be red. So button A, so I'll put zero. Oh, because red is the least significant bit. So the first one here, so red is the least significant bit. So I'm going to... Oh, dear me. It's obviously green work because it's in the middle, so it's kind of symmetric. It doesn't matter. So so blue is the most significant bit, so I need to make the most significant bit. So did I get it right for that one? I must have got mixed up. What did I say yellow was? Blue and green. I might have got that wrong. So here, so that's the two lead, two least significant bits. So red and oh no, red and green gives you yellow. Oof. So I'll test that now. So A, uh, this should be red, okay. Green, blue, yellow. 